Hey everyone, Mrs. Spatola here. Today we're going to look at our Unit 3 study guide for properties and expressions. Remember on the left side we have the definitions of the terms uh, exponent, base, powers, squared, cubed. Please make sure you're reading. If you have any questions or you don't understand, make sure you look at the opposite side on the left side here so that you can get a review. Also, be sure you are turning back in your workbook to previous pages and to previous lessons. For numbers 1, 2, and 3, you can see that they were um, exponents. An exponent is the smaller number that goes along with the base. It tells how many times to multiply the base by itself. So for number one, the answer was 125. For number two, the answer was 36. Number three, the answer was 64. In the order of operations, we have parentheses, exponents, multiplication, or division. Now remember, it's super, super important that with multiplication and division, it's whichever one comes first in the problem from left to right. You are not just starting at the beginning and going straight across. You have to search, are there parentheses? Are there exponents? Is there multiplication or division? Which one comes first? If division comes first, division goes first. Okay, and then lastly, after multiplication and division, there's addition or subtraction. Remember, it's whichever one comes first in the problem from left to right. For number four, the answer was 78. For number five, the answer was five. Number six, the answer was 23. Number seven, the answer was 32. For number eight, the answer was 70. Number nine, if you couldn't see it, it's fine. The answer was 29. The work for numbers eight and nine, here is the work for number eight over here. And then we have the work for number nine, which is below it. And the answer right there is 29. Here are the answers to the properties. Number seven is the identity property of addition. Any number plus zero is that number. Number nine, the identity property of multiplication. Any number times one is that number. For number nine, it's the commutative property. Notice the properties change order. Number 10, it's the commutative property of addition. The numbers change order or they commute, they go back and forth. Number 11 is the associative property of addition. Notice the groups hang out differently. The, all of the people or all of the numbers in this case are the same, but they hang out differently before that you solve each problem, but the answer would still be the same. Number 12, again, the commutative property of addition. The numbers change order, or it reminds you of commuting going back and forth. The numbers change order, they go back and forth. Number 13, again, is the associative property of multiplication. For number 13, that should be a multiplication sign in there, not an addition sign. So please correct that. So the answer for that is the associative property of multiplication. The numbers, the groups, the hangouts change order. Again, this should be a multiplication sign in here. Number 14 is something called the zero property. Any number times zero is zero. And then number 15 is the distributive property. For number 16, you had to write an example of each of the properties. Boys and girls, this is something that you have to memorize. You are responsible for memorizing these properties. If you put the time in and you follow the hints that we've been giving you in class, you will be successful. So A, commutative and example, three plus four equals four plus three. The numbers change order. Letter B, an example of the associative property, five times six times seven, notice the parentheses around the five and the six first, and then again, equals five times six times seven, the parentheses change, and they're around the six and the seven. The distributive, I like to think of the distributive again as the combo, that's the combo property. Why? Because we have a combination or a combo of multiplication here and addition, or we could have a combination of multiplication and subtraction. Remember, when you have a number next to the parentheses, it means to multiply, and if they are separated like this, that means that it is an example of the distributive property. 
If it says the distributive property in a problem, make sure you use it. That's all you have to know. Number 17, the answer was 50. Again, applying the distributive property. What happens here is you're multiplying the outside number onto the numbers in the inside, and then you follow the order of operations. For number 17, the answer was 50. 18, the answer was 15. 19, the answer was 126. And number 20, the answer was 96. With the distributive property, we have the break apart also. It will tell you exactly what you need to do in order to solve the problem. Numbers are broken uh, for the break apart. Numbers are broken apart and multiplied. For example, when we have something like this, 6 times 47, notice we set it up. We break apart the 47 as 40 plus 7. We break it up in the tens. We make it easier. And then we have 6 times 40 plus 6 times 7. And then we follow the order of operations and we wind up with the final answer of 282. Let's take a look at numbers 21 through 24 and see how you did. Number 21, the answer was 144. Number 22, the answer was 185. Number 23, the answer was 371. And number 24, the answer was 40. Sometimes you will be asked to identify expressions as numerical or algebraic. Remember, if it's numerical, we always think numerical numbers, numerical numbers. That's always easy because if it's numbers, it's just numbers. For example, four plus seven, numbers and operation signs only. Algebraic, we think alphabet, and we think of the letters of the alphabet, which are known as variables. The definition tells us there are numbers, operation signs, and variables. So if you see anything with a variable or a letter, automatically it's algebraic. And here are the answers for 25 through 27. 25 is algebraic, it has a variable. 26, numerical, numbers only. And 27, algebraic, has a variable. Hope you did a great job. Now let's take a look at today's lesson. Unit three, lesson 10, evaluating algebraic expressions with input-output tables. How can you evaluate algebraic expressions with input-output tables? You may have seen an input-output table in elementary school. Basically, all it is is you're going to be putting something in, numbers into a problem, you're solving and getting an answer. So let's get right into the lesson. Sometimes you will be given the rule and you will need to substitute for a value to solve the expression. You will need to show work, oh, you gotta show the work, and the substitution. So let's take a look at number one. Number one reads y equals 3x plus 4. So let me start by saying, and you should be taking these notes, when we talk about input output, the letter X is going to be your input and the letter Y is going to be your output. So that means that when we have this expression here, Y equals three X plus four, I'm going to, now I have two variables here. I have X and I have Y. So what's going to happen is my input X, I'm going to substitute here, and then my output is going to be my total answer. Let's look at the first example. X is equal to two, so I'm going to solve this expression here y equals 3x plus 4, and x is going to be equal to 2. So all I need to do for this is to substitute the 2 for the x and get my answer. So let's take a look. y equals 3 times 2 plus 4. Now, can you solve that? Of course you can. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 4. Four, my answer is 10. So y is equal to 10. So what happens is when I substitute x with 2, my input is x. That means my output is... Now let's look at the next one. 
If x is equal to 3, what is my output? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show my work on the side here, and I'm going to rewrite my work. y is equal to 3x plus 4, and x is equal to 3. So I'm going to plug in the 3 for the variable x. So it's y equals 3 times 3 plus 4. 3 times 3 is 9 plus 4. So y is equal to 9 plus 4. 9 plus 4 is 13. And there's my answer. Y is equal to 13. So what am I going to do? I'm going to come back over to my output. When X is equal to 3, my output is equal to 13. For the next one, X is equal to 8. So I'm going to, again, rewrite the problem. Okay, Y equals 3X plus 4, and X is equal to 8. Pause the video and see if you can try this one on your own. And if you did it correctly, y is equal to 28. And what you're going to do is just come back over here to your table and y is equal to 28. And you're done with that one. Let's try the next problem. Look at number two. Number two is y equals 2x minus 2 plus 4. So that's the expression that we're going to solve. We're going to solve for x. So x is my input and then y is my output. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say x is equal to 2, x is equal to 3, and x is equal to 4. These are the same things as evaluating expressions, but they're giving us a couple of numbers now and we're plugging them into our expression here. So let's try the first one together. We're going to copy down the problem. See where it says show work here? You're going to show your work. Y equals 2X minus 2. Now remember, it's in parentheses, so that means you need to do that first, plus 4. For the first example, X is equal. I'm going through the table. X is equal to 2, so I'm going to plug in X equals 2. Now I'm going to substitute the 2 for the x. So y equals, now watch, in parentheses, 2 times 2 minus 2 plus 4. Now you need to be careful. There's a couple of sets of parentheses here, so you want to be a little bit more careful here. 2 times 2 is 4 minus 2. We keep it in parentheses, plus 4. 4 minus 2 is 2 plus 4. So what is y equal to? I kind of bring this down here. Finally, y is equal to 6. When you get your answer, you go back to your table and you put it here. So when x is equal to 2, y is equal to 6. Let's try the next one. x is equal to now 3. So we're going to write the same problem on the side here y equals 2x minus 2 in parentheses plus 4. x is equal to 3 this time. You're going to substitute the 3 in for the 2. So y equals, now be careful, 2 times 3 minus 2 plus 4. Now I'm just going to follow the order of operations. Make sure you continue to bring your y down. This is 6 minus 2. In parentheses, do that first. And then 6 minus 2 is 4 plus 4. My final answer is 8. So y is equal to 4 plus 4. You're just going to keep bringing it down. And my final answer is y is equal to 8. I come back here to my table. So when x is equal to 3, y is equal to 8. Try the last one on your own. Again, copy the problem to x. You should be copying it down all the time. A good math student 
follows through, does all the work, and doesn't take shortcuts because shortcuts could lead to mistakes. All right, lastly, pause the video and give it a shot. And for the last one, when X is equal to four, Y is equal to 10. Hope you did that one well. Try number three on your own. Pause the video. Make sure I like to put input, output, just to help you to remember at the beginning. This one, this problem's a lot easier. X is equal to two, X is equal to six, X is equal to 12. Okay, try these three on your own. Go, pause. And for the next one, when X is equal to six, Y is equal to three, pause, do the last one. And when X is equal to 12 for the last one, Y is equal to six. This next page here is just additional practice. So you will be responsible for completing this page, follow through step by step, make sure you show all of your work because we will be checking in class. So you definitely wanna make sure that you're solving all of them and showing the work. For number one here, I know there's no number one written, so let's put number one for the first one at the top. We have y equals two x plus six. So basically all you would have to do, we know that x is my input, y is my output, and I'm going to just show my work in the center here. This is where I'm going to show my work. It looks a little different than the other two charts. So for here, what I'm going to do, I wanna shrink my writing a little bit. Here is my expression here. So it's y is equal to two x plus six. So I will write y equals two times two plus six. Y is equal to four plus six. Y is equal to 10. There's my answer. So if my input is two, my output is 10. Next one, X is now equal to three. Okay, now X is equal to three. So I'm gonna do it again. Y equals two times, now I'm substituting in three for X plus six. Pause the video, try this one on your own. So for the next one, when X is equal to three, Y is equal to 12. Try the last one. You should start to see a pattern here. It's the same thing. It's repetitive. You're just substituting different numbers for the same expression. Try the next one for the value of X is equal to nine. Go. And for the next one, when X is equal to nine, Y is equal to 24. You're going to try the rest of the page on your own. Pause the video and check your answers as you go along. Please remember, you're on the honor system here and the best way that you can learn and help yourself is to follow the directions. If you're not understanding, make sure you ask questions in class or even in the Google Classroom. Make sure you don't send it as a private comment, put it in the classroom itself because you have some great classmates that can help you. We all can help each other, we're all in this together. All right, try number two for y equals 5x. Pause the video, try them on your own, and then restart to check your answers. Okay, there are the answers for number two. When x is equal to seven, y is equal to 35. When x is equal to eight, y is equal to 40. And lastly, when x is equal to nine, y is equal to 45. Lastly, we have number three. Your input is here, X is your input, your output is Y. And for the remaining two, X is equal to four and X is equal to six. Here is what you're solving. Try that one on your own, pause the video, and then check your answers. These will be the last two. And there you have the answers for number three, when X is equal to four, your output is 39, and when x is equal to six, your output is 57. Now you're going to just complete the next page in the study guide, follow the directions in the Google Classroom. This is Mrs. Spatola wishing you a great day.